Okay, good morning, David. Hey, Mike, I thought we'll do something unexpected today with the first question and ask you about Dak. Uh, just <laughs> what will, uh, uh, since he wasn't going to play in this game anyway, is he kind of on a schedule where roughly what he did yesterday and then next week when you get back to Frisco, kind of working back closer to what he was? I think, you know, uh, as far as his movement, he'll, he'll continue to do what he's been doing. So, I mean, he's been you know, getting a full day's work, you know, as far as overall movement, um, you know, as far as conditioning and, you know, the work in the run plays, the quarterback drills. But I think like anything, I, I think it's only natural when, when you shut a quarterback down completely, you know, throwing, then there's a process where you got to build them back up. So, uh, so we'll continue to go through that regiment uh, today. So he'll do a little more throwing today than he did yesterday. How did he come off uh, the field yesterday with his throwing? How does he feel today? Everything's good. Yeah, I talked to him this morning, so. He's uh, feeling good and just wants to keep progressing. Is that third preseason game still the realistic <clears throat> goal at this point, or can you also make that the fourth game if, if it's? I hope goal? so. You know, I, I hope so. We'll just you know see, see how today goes, and um, you know when we get back to to Frisco, just you know, stay on course. So and yeah, it, it would be great. But I, I think just like uh, anything, you know, my experience is. Uh, you know, just like playtime, you know, we won't discuss playtime until tomorrow morning. You know, once we get all the uh, medical information in from today's practice, you know, this is a, a full day today, you know, with the padded practices and mock game. And so, we, you know, we haven't, we haven't padded up since, you know, since we practiced against the Rams. So, uh, you know, we need to have a big day today. How do you script out what he does on the side? Is it just going through a series of plays and situations? I mean, it's all measured. I mean, I, th I think the communication between, you know, Britt Brown and, you know, what he's done, you know, all the way through this process. So, you know, I was kidding Britt that, you know, I, I, that he needs to start giving me his uh, template script a little sooner because he's uh, kind of drags his feet when it comes time to talk real football. Mike, we got to watch Hard Knocks last night and hear some of that dialogue uh, about keeping him back. Is that still something you have to convince him to take it easy? Or does he get it now that he just has to go slow? I mean, I think it's like anything uh, in this business. You know, every, every player has a different personality. Um, I, I think, you know, when you think about competitiveness and, and work ethic and, and his drive, it's it's obviously at the at the highest level. Um, you know, I, I think that's clear to anybody that's ever worked with him or been around him. So, but yeah, I mean, every, everything's regulated. Um, so, I mean, he's he's in great shape. I mean, I, I know just what he's done with his body and um, you know just just the way he looks and. The way he's leaned, you know, he's leaned down. So I mean, it's you know going through those changes, which will definitely be will be a huge advantage for him in the long run. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's why I think you see us taking an approach that we've taken with him. Can you update us on some of the scrimmage injuries, uh, Gallimore, Basham, some of those guys. Uh, Basham won't work today. Uh, Gallimore, you know, hopefully we'll see how he comes out of the talk through here. But uh, I, I see for I see Neville coming today. Mike, back to Hard Knocks, I mean, NFL teams are so buttoned up, they don't want to have information out, and here we are, you know, we're all seeing it, the whole world is seeing that. What, what is that like as a coach, having so much information that normally would never be seen by anybody, and NFL fans across the world are watching what you guys talk about? I mean, I think it's human nature, you know, especially in this business. It's, I mean, it's definitely, you know, it's not the preferred. I mean, I, it's, uh, there's still an uncomfortableness with it. Uh, you know, you see yourself. You know, still being guarded. I, I think that's only natural. Um, but you know, I, I think with that, uh, you know, the relationship between you know the, the Hard Knocks crew and and really Rich is the is the point person on it for us. So uh, you know, we're we're comfortable with the with the end product, just to make sure that uh, you know the competitive advantage and those types of things is is taken into account. Mike, do you know any coach who's okay with it? Or all of you guys sort of cut out of the same cloth that you'd really rather not? I mean, I haven't. Uh, you know. Ask a bunch of guys, but uh, yeah, I, I I don't, you know, I can't really speak on their behalf. I, I think it's it's just, you know, it, it, it's like anything. I mean, you, you have a norm, you have an operation, um, you know, you, you have environments that you that you operate in, and you know, you, you're always tweaking it and adjusting it, and and, and this isn't this is an adjusted and adjustment, and I think our our players especially have done a great job uh, working working in this environment, so. Um, I mean, I can't say it enough. I mean, the Hard Knocks crews, they've been very professional. So it's not, it's not, you know, it's not that, you know, it's just, it's just not, it's not normal. Obviously, the young guys get pretty hyped up through that first action. 
you had it in the Hall of Fame game. Uh, Isaac Alarcon said, he will, he, excuse me, he said, my heart was beating through my chest. The adrenaline was pumping so hard. I said, was that right before you went in? He said, no, it was when I woke up. <laughs> yeah. So do you find that that second game is a little more indicative of how guys are going to play because they've settled down for the young guys? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a natural progression. I think you see that. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of times when you see players that, you know, they're thinking too much, they, you know, they hesitate a little bit. And, you know, we definitely had a lot of that in the second half. Um, so, you know, we're, we're actually spending more time with our younger players uh, started yesterday and today and we'll get tomorrow just, you know, because we, we need to get, you know, more production. We're looking for uh, improvement, particularly in the second half group. Since we won't talk to you again until after the, the preseason game, what do you feel you were able to accomplish or feel good about what you did at this phase of training camp? And what are areas as you break and go back to Frisco that you feel really need to focus on? I mean, I feel I feel great about our installation phase. I mean, the workload capacity of being out here in this weather is tremendous. I mean, it's a, you know, I, I was a, I, I was actually nervous because everybody that had been there before just raved about how how great it was, and I, I was worried I was worried about yeah, but it's it's great to practice football. So I mean, because everything was great outside of what we did on the field, but. Uh, but that wasn't the case. I mean, the, the, the work, the workload capacity that you're able to, uh, to really crank on as opposed to being in the heat because, uh, you know, it's, you know, guys are just trying to get through the practice, you know, so you can see the, just in the range. One thing uh, GPS does give you, uh, you know, you can see the ranges and the trend, trend lines of the player participation, you know, through the individual drills into the group periods, into the team periods. And so, um, in this atmosphere here, you're, you're able you're able to really crank it, and uh, so the the quality of work is which you're always chasing, but the, the quantity we definitely hit the target. What did you see from Jabril Cox Thursday night? Um, just you know, obviously love the way he moves and you know plays, but you know, I think he was a little hesitant at first. You know, and I think once he got going, he was he's, he's probably a, a good example of, the, of of what the second half looked like for a lot of our guys. So um, you know, I look for him to take the Next step, and you know, particularly in special teams, and, and into the second half. Kalo suffered what I believe was a neck injury in that Hall of Fame game. Can you provide any details about where his future? Yeah, it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a while. I don't have the exact timeline, but um, you know he definitely will not be available the rest of the preseason. Can you speak surgical thing that he may need? As of right now, no, but he, he will not be available the rest of the preseason. What does added nerve? What do you like about him on your staff, and what you've seen from him coaching the defensive line? I mean, AD's have been a, a great addition. Uh, I think just like anything, uh, you know, as, as a coaching staff, you know, you know, his passion for the game is, is evident. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's a great glue, glue guy. You know, his personality, uh, work ethic, you know, he's the same energy every day. Um, it's, it's, it's awesome to work with someone that has a thicker accent than yourself. So I really appreciate that. And, you know, so uh, he's, I love him. He, he's been a great addition. Background, does that in a way help? You think that he, he didn't grow up the traditional oh, football absolutely. way? How did that help? Absolutely. I mean, you think you look at his path and, and what he's come, you know, overcome, and you know, you know, his starting point is is it's a great story. Uh, you know, working through personnel and, and just you know all the things that he was able to you know experience before he you know this particular opportunity. I mean, it's I think it's a it's a, shows you his diversity and. Uh, he's 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 built a, a great foundation, and uh, there's not a conversation in a room that he's not comfortable speaking in. Coach, we saw Amari in the walkthrough yesterday coming off the PUP. Is, yeah. it, is it a similar plan with Demarcus? And the same deal to kind of ramp them up? Absolutely. I mean, same thought process. We want to get 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 them back into the mock games. Get get the mental the mental part of it going. Uh, obviously, he's doing a great job. Uh, the, you know, the strength coaches and and the uh, trainers feel really good about where he is. You know, right now, so. Uh, he's really, you know, re really done a great job in the con conditioning component of it. So getting them game ready is obviously what we're trying to do. But it was really just to get them back in the mental part of it. You guys didn't carry a fullback, true fullback last season. You have for a number of years with the Packers. What's your philosophy in that and your comfort level and the versatility of your tight ends? Should you not carry a fullback, their ability to come in? I, mean, I love the fullback position. I mean, the ability, you know, to me, I think offensive football, is, you, you, you can categorize it as, you know, you got one back, two back, and no backs. And that's, that's the way I've always built offensive uh, schemes yearly, and, and I think you have to look at it look at it that way because, you know, today's NFL player acquisition. You know, you you want to take the best players available, particularly in the draft process, 
um, obviously in the free agent process. So um, I, I've, I've, you know, I've had rosters that had three fullbacks on the 53, and you know, I've had rosters that don't have any. Frankly, I, I always look at the roster development as really about the. It's really the responsibility of the players because you know, as they compete and 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 as things shake out, particularly in the spring, and you make sure you have. You know, schemes and concepts available. You know, throughout the one back, no back, or two back. Um, you, really, the competition between the tight ends and the fullback, and you know that the versatility. Special teams always plays a big factor in that. You know, and that's really what's happened to the fullback position because it's. When you look at it from a business standpoint, you know, the fullback position. If a guy doesn't play special teams, he's, you know, he's going to play five, six, maybe ten snaps a game. So um, that's that's part of it. And you know, that, that's a shame about Shaywo. I mean, he's you know he. He had an opportunity to potentially be a, a primary special teams player for us, you know, because he has that that body type of, you know, he could play, you know, almost some of the the movement tight end, you know, assignments and things like that. So, uh, the flexibility of, of having a, a fullback that has, you know, the multiplicity of, of playing special teams and be able to move around is, I think you're seeing more and more of it here in the last three or four years um, in the league, and it's coming back. What have you seen from Gilbert and the extra snaps he's gotten with Dak out? And how difficult is it to build confidence in a guy as your primary backup when he has such a thin resume as a starter or playing in NFL games? What do you kind of base your confidence on when a player in that situation? I think the biggest thing, Garrett, the, 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 the next step is just just get the efficiency, you know, where where exactly it needs to be. I mean, he, he does the hard things. I mean, he keeps us in good plays. Um, he commands – the line of scrimmage, you know, has made the, the tougher throws, uh, but the efficiency of, of making all the, you know, the efficient throws is is something that just really comes with, with snaps, you know, reps. So uh, the one thing you always look for in the development of quarterbacks are they responding with their opportunities uh, they're given, and Garrett, Garrett has definitely done that. He's um, he's gotten better, you know, with every opportunity he's had. I mean, you just look at his opportunity last year uh, against Pittsburgh. You know, he he, he did some. He did some excellent things at the line of scrimmage in that game. I mean, they were overloading us in their run defensive calls, and, and he kept us in healthy uh, run plays throughout that game. So, uh, but he's he's really taken advantage of this opportunity that the snaps that he's been he's been given with Dak not practicing. Prefer in a backup, a veteran who knows kind of what to do, or a guy who's developing and will we'll get there. Well, the most important thing, he gives a chance to win. So, I mean, whatever category you want to put him in, uh, you know. But I think also you got to recognize, uh, you know, our our quarterback room, and you know, and and uh, you know where your starter is in his career sometimes plays into how you're developing, you know, the the players behind him, the quarterbacks behind him. So, end of the day, you know, you, the, the backup has to, you know, has to be able to keep the team playing, keep the offense playing. To its full capabilities, for, you know, getting the ball to the perimeter, perimeter guys, you know, keeping that, you know, clean looks in both the run and the protection, and, you know, and, and, Garrett, and Garrett gives us that, and you know, Cooper's that type of player too. So, I mean, that, and that's where Ben has to continue to work too. So that's 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 the most important part because uh, you know the quarterback has to put the other guys in position to be successful. Will Rush be able to do anything today, or uh, I'm actually waiting on that. I don't have a final on Cooper today. Cooker, is he ready to put the pads on? Getting better, yeah. He's getting better. He's getting close. Uh, uh, Malik Turner, would, you know, obviously he looked, appeared to be ascending through this camp and made a bunch of good plays yeah. in the Pittsburgh game, even knocking down the interception or potential interception. Yeah. But then he had the fumble. So when you look at the body of work from that game with Malik, what do you, how do you judge? That? I mean, you know, the the fumble is a big play in the game, uh, obviously. So I mean, you can't. I mean, ball security is. Is the primary focus for our football team. I mean, we were, we were poor last year, uh, especially taking care of the ball. I, I think we were seventh in the league taking it away. Um, so you know that's that's definitely a big play that you know we, we need to learn from. But you know Malik did so many other good things in the game. Um, you know he, he plays. You know he's an excellent special teams player. I mean there's not too many practices that we've had the padded work that he hasn't uh, stood out and made some plays. You know so I think Malik is having a heck of a camp for us. What, you, what do, will your approach be with the second game since you don't have a, a Rams practice right after it? Will you <laughs> extend the, the number of – You liked that games? schedule, didn't you? Yeah. It was an interesting one. Yeah, we'll, know, we'll, we'll do it again. So. <laughs> what is your approach in the second game? Is it basically just the same yeah. in the first and then the third you start to change? Well, the second game, you also got to factor when we're going back to Dallas. I mean, I, I mean that, that plays into it. I mean, 
you know, we're transitioning uh, from being away from camp. So, I mean, that's, it's not going to be the normal turnaround. Uh, so you'll, you'll see that in the way, you know, it's reflected. So we, we get late, you know, after the game Friday night, we get back late. Uh, so the players and, 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 the, and the players will be off. Coaches will have a chance to transition and get their offices uh, in order and so forth. And, and then Monday we have a night practice. It's the blue and white practice. So we'll start later in the day because I, I just want to make sure everybody has a chance to transition, you know, also be practicing indoors and then uh, because, you know, the, the Tuesday practice is the, the really the one I'm more focused on because, you know, we'll be practicing in 90, you know, 90 plus degree weather and uh, you got the, a lot of, a lot of glass around you, you know, on, with the practice fields. And so it'll be hotter than 92 plus degrees. So, I mean, there's, those are the kind of things that, that, that I think about. Uh, so, you know, there's going to be a transition period there for our team, and we just got to make sure we train smart during that transition. Which parts of getting back to Dallas are you most looking forward to? Say again? Which parts of getting back to Dallas are you most looking forward to? Well, I mean, it's our environment. Uh, I think routine, you know, not only transitioning from, from California to, to Frisco, I mean, there's, there's definitely a transition in, in our daily schedule. You know, it's, you'll see us go more to an in-season uh, schedule. Uh, I think there's, there's always a point in training camp where you want to get your team regulated. <laughs> Uh, into the in-season mode, you know that, that that's something we'll work through uh, going into the Houston week because uh, Houston will be the will be kind of like our dress rehearsal. And I'm not really talking about the game; it's more about you know what the days look like leading up to the game. Like we see on the defensive line, there's heavy rotation of guys. With how you guys are set up at linebacker, is that a possibility where you can rotate guys in and out and really even out playing time with all those guys? Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing is is, is personnel groups, you know, matchups. I mean, you're. You're trying to project. I mean, you do it every year, uh, so uh, we definitely have a lot more flexibility because of the, you know, the level of experience and talent that we have at the linebacker group. So yeah, that's that's definitely something that I think is obvious we've been exploring. You mentioned the glass there at uh, training or uh, Frisco, eyes on you and things like that. Are you used to the level of scrutiny, or, or is the level of scrutiny with this job any different than when you were in Green Bay? Well, I mean, I was referring to the glass because of the heat that it, that that it. Uh, you know, so. I was talking about different kind of heat, so uh, yeah. I, I mean, to me, that's the business. Um, I mean, scrutiny. You know, wh whether it's ten or twenty. I mean, wh what's what's the difference? I, I think, like anything in our business, in the longer you're in it, uh, the more and more you understand it and appreciate it. I mean, you always have urgency. You know, my urgency is is to get this this practice in today because our our younger players need a, a, a. This is kind of the first rule Thursday preparation in-season Thursday type preparation practice they have and, and it has to translate to them performing better on Friday night so that's to me urgency is in everything that you do uh, it's not where you are in your career or what happened last year because if you don't have the daily urgency you're going to get left behind in this business so um, and that's just the way I've always approached it um, I think we all have it as coaches in this in this business because we all understand I mean it's you know you, you, got, you have to win now and and you know, so you have that that urgency, uh, but there's also a, a very um, keen eye on on developing program for the long term too. I think we, that's reflected in in our draft classes the last two years. So, I mean, that that's part of the job. But you know, the urgency is, is to get this team ready to win. You know, now. I mean, we go to Tampa. We you know we, we're going in there full expectations to to win our opening game. You know, and everything we do now is leading up to that. And the ur urgency is part of the fuel that drives that. And uh, Dak's potential availability in later preseason games. There, there are other NFL coaches like Sean McVay who said Matthew Stafford's not going to be on the field at all during the preseason. What is the philosophy in general with quarterbacks and star players getting time in preseason? Well, I mean, we all understand uh, the business component of it and, 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 and the commitment to, to you know, certain players on the payroll. So, I mean, you, you can't be naive to that. that that's real. Uh, but also, you know, you, you measure – you measure risk assessment every day, and, and there's always a you know there's a, there's a level of risk of practicing you know that's accepted. There's a level of risk practicing against another team, you know. So I mean, you you look at those things, you and at the end of the day, you make a you know a conscious, educated decision, and you you go about it. And at the end of the day, you know these players, you know that's why you see the way they approach practice, the same way they approach the game, because they have to have one clean mindset when they step on the field. At, Always has to be the same for those guys. So, I mean, it's not their job to, wor to worry about, um, you know, when I play, how much I play, and so forth. Because if it, they let that in there into the, 
their thought process. They're not, they're, you know, they're not focused on what they should be focused on, and that's to treat the, you know, the field every, the same every time they step out there. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I get how other people, you know, do it, um, but I think it also reflects on where you think you are, you know, on each side of the ball. I mean, you may look at the defense different than the offense. You know, defense, this is the first year, you know, in the system. Offense, uh, you know, there's a lot of carryover with our veteran players. So all those things go into account when you talk about play time and how you decide to play your team in the preseason. Mike, after 30-some-odd NFL training camps or whatever it's been for you, is this the first time vasectomy talk has come up? Uh, on, on, on TV, yeah. I mean, that's the cleanest version I think I've ever heard. But it's, I was kind of shocked Rich let it slip through. But. Thank you. Well, it's good to see Rich get a little second guessing going on out there. That's good.